Dan Gilbert, what the hell are you doing? There is a point in time to say something. There is a point in time to strategically say something. So that way you have the hopes that it gets leaked out into the media and you create leverage for yourself. I get that. But this is not one of those times. If there was ever a time for Dan Gilbert to just shut the hell up, this would be one of them. I'm sure most of you saw what came out yesterday about Dan Gilbert reportedly telling sources that he wouldn't mind if LeBron James left because then he could get his team back. Just think about that. He couldn't wait for LeBron James, an all-time great, a legend, a icon, a guy that has just led your team to four straight NBA Finals appearances, including that championship, coming back from a 3-1 deficit in the 2016 Finals, mind you, against a 73-win Warriors team. He won't mind if LeBron leaves because he can get his organization back. This is somewhat reminiscent to me in a, I guess, in a different way from when Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause were ready to move on from Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan. They were ready, especially Jerry Krause, because he wanted to prove once and for all that organizations, not great players and coaches, win championships. Well, that fat ass got his way in two decades later. The Bulls are still in a rebuilding mode. The message I have for Dan Gilbert is very simple. Be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. What the hell were the Cleveland Cavaliers before LeBron James? You got to go back to the late 80s, early 90s, where they were a second tier, not quite elite NBA team with Mark Price and Doherty and Larry Nance, Ron Harper, Craig Elo. They were not a great team. They were a pretty good team. And then that's it. And then you had the wasteland of the Fratello era and freaking Bobby Sura and Phils and oh my! Those are the days you want to harken back to? The days of freaking Ricky Davis trying to sit there and pad his stats and freaking getting his triple doubles in a bullshit manner? I know a lot of that precedes you, Dan Gilbert. But let's be realistic here. The Cleveland Cavaliers were nothing really, before LeBron James came into the fold in 2003. When he left, the Cleveland Cavaliers were, you guessed it, nothing. He comes back, you're something. And if he leaves again, you know what you're going to be? Absolutely nothing. You want your organization, you want your team back. What the hell is that supposed to be? What the hell team or organization are you going to have? Why would somebody be in such a rush to sit there and want to suck so badly again? Now, I understand if you're Dan Gilbert, you could feel like in some ways, as the owner of the team, that you get no love, no credit, no respect for coming out of pocket to the amount that you have to build that team and pay for that team involving LeBron James and surrounding LeBron James. I can also understand that dealing with LeBron might not be the easiest thing in the world to do when you've got a megastar like that who has been enabled and feels entitled and somewhat justifiably so. They can be incredibly prickly, difficult personalities to deal with. And after a while, that can grate on you as the boss, as the owner. You want to be the HNIC of all that everybody sees. You're tired of LeBron getting all the credit. You're tired of everybody crapping on you. You're tired of maybe dealing with LeBron James. And especially knowing that you went so deeply into the salary cap that you're spending a shit ton more money than a lot of other owners. But ultimately, whose fault is that? That's your fault for signing off on the moves that David Griffin and now Kobe Altman have made as general manager of the Cavaliers. You did this stuff knowing this is part of the deal with LeBron James. You do this stuff knowing... There's going to be a certain demand, a certain expectation when you have the best player in the game in your organization. And to sit there now and leak out there. And that's what he did. 
He talked about it because he wanted it to get out of the media because for some particular reason, he thinks that he's going to be able to exercise any type of leverage over LeBron James by sitting there and letting him know, we really don't need you. We don't have to have you. We will be just fine without you. Well, ding dong, dumb dick. You've been down this road a few years ago. And again, I ask, how exactly did that work out for you? Anybody? Anybody? Okay, you got a couple of number one overall picks out of the deal. And it still didn't matter until LeBron James came back to Cleveland. He came back home. And I understand it's expensive. I understand LeBron can be difficult to deal with. But LeBron also brings a massive economic impact to the city of Cleveland as a whole. And in particular, as long as LeBron James is in the fold, the Cleveland Cavaliers franchise has a much, 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 much greater value and imprint in the league than if he wasn't there. I'm sorry, but looking at LeBron and seeing what goes with it, I'd kind of like to keep the guy around because I know having him on the floor gives my organization a chance to be incredibly relevant, make deep runs in the playoffs, and if you get the right breaks, put the right construction and configuration around him, you could potentially be winning another NBA championship. And if you're going to spend that much damn money anyways, you might as well make it count and try to go for the gusto and go for it all. I can't wait to get my team back. What a dumb ass thing to freaking say. You want him to leave or wouldn't mind him leaving so that way you can get your shit back. And that's exactly what it would be, a shit show. Because that's what it was when LeBron left and that's what it would be if you allowed LeBron to leave again. Yes, I understand it's easy to talk when it's not my money. And I understand Dan Gilbert is forking over a lot of money to get a lot of crap and a lot of shit and be the villain in a lot of people's eyes. But damn it all, you've got a lot of FU money anyways, Dan Gilbert. Who gives a crap? You can afford it. You will make that money back. And you especially make that money back with the increased franchise value that LeBron James brings into the fold. Don't chase away legends. Don't chase away icons. Because these are things that downstream have negative impacts and consequences for your organization for years. It is why two decades later, in part, the Chicago Bears, Bulls, excuse me, are still in a damn constant rebuilding mode. Because even now, younger players can remember all these bad years of the Bulls. And they remember how that organization, who's still owned by Jerry Reinsdorf, mind you, the guy that oversaw them running off Bill Jackson and Michael Jordan 20 damn years ago because the Penguin, <laughs> oh, we really like Dickie Simpkins. We really like Corey Blunt. Oh, we really like Jason Covey. Oh, we really like Hudson Brand. We really like Marcus Heiser. Oh, I have one power forward. When you can take any Korean Tyson Chandler and get two centers. Oh, people still remember that. People still know and nobody worth a shit wants to go there. If that's what you aspire to be and that's what you want to be, then that's fine. But for me, I would think as long as I'm going to have to fork over a shit ton of money, and even without LeBron, you're still paying out a shit ton of money anyways, you might as well get the most bang for your buck and try to circle the wagons and win a championship the next year. Be careful what you wish for, Dan Gilbert, because you just might get it. And then you're going to prove yourself to look like the clown that everybody already thinks you are.